is nothing. Only warm, primordial blackness. Your conscious ferments in it. No larger than a single grain of malt. You don't have to do anything anymore. Ever. Never. Ever. An inordinate amount of time passes. It is utterly void of struggle. No ex-wives are contained within it. You got it, sweet brother. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. Coming right up, sir. Smooth passage. All right. Nothing town to fuck all, Barra. Not you. Your days of giving a shit and being that type of animal are over. The song of death is sweet and endless. But what is this? Somewhere in the sore, bloated man meet around you. A sensation. Like a fly to the ointment, your conscience sticks to it. The limbed and headed machine of pain and undignified suffering is firing up again. It wants to walk the desert, hurting, longing to disco music. The stench of liquor rises from your mouth. Annoy with it. An ungodly headache. A fiery streak penetrates your skull, trying to force your eyes open. It's a sound. A clarion call from hell. Somehow, you know what it is. A caprice to name a motor carriage. This fan has two chain pull switches. One ends in a tiny fan, the other in a light bulb. A truly horrific necktie has somehow attached itself to one of the blades. You swoop up and catch the tie. Snap, it's released from the blade. What you have in your hand is a truly hideous necktie with four or five different patterns. The knot reminds you of a noose. You hear a jingle. Keys are clinking in the pocket of your flare-cut pants. It says, whirling in rags, on the aluminium key ring. There is a single key on the ring. The number one is etched on it. It should open the door. The whirling in rags is a hostile cafeteria on the urban coast, frequented by dock workers.
mirror hangs above a bent and broken sink. In a fierce discharge of masculine energy, someone has ripped half the faucet off. Was this not the same Elon that founds empires and lays waste to cities, virile, uncaring towards the little things? Probably not, no. Hot water sprays from the faucet's base and steam covers the mirror. You cannot see yourself, just a vague impression of a man. Suddenly, you realize you have no memory of the face that awaits you there, underneath the soft vapor. Really, all recollection of the person you are, the people in your life, and even the world you're in, has drowned in a sea of blood alcohol. This was no mere night of drinking. It was a deluge of world-ending proportions. As you slowly reach your hand towards the surface of the mirror, a bolt. You clearly have not thought this through. You won't like what you see there, and you will never unbecome it. Yeah, there is definitely something wrong with it. Where to even begin? There is the bloatedness, then the swollenness. It's like there's an upholstery of alcohol underneath your skin. Bet you are. Your nose feels like a small balloon in the middle of your face. It hurts when you honk it. It doesn't appear to be a particularly tiny nose either. Not with all the drinks it's absorbed for you. It's not. It's swollen and snail-like, wriggling between your fingers. Behold. You have no idea who this thing is, do you? It appears you're also dead. There's clearly rigor mortis on your face. Oh wait, is that an expression? Are you trying to make an expression with that face? Why? Please stop. It's horrible. You're scaring yourself. You can't, can you? It's like it's not even voluntary anymore. You have worn that grin into your face and now it won't come off. What does it even mean? What is the emotion you're trying to convey? You should check yourself for a pulse, superstar. From here it looks like a cadaverous spasm. You find no sign of life on your swollen neck. However, putting your hand on your chest reveals an irregular heartbeat. You appear to be alive, for now. It belongs in the new, the third decade of the current century. Enough time had passed from the failure of the revolution that, for a fleeting moment, Free market economy seemed like the ultimate, uncontested way of life for our species. Things were good. It was smooth sailing. People made gold and champagne-tinted interiors and facades to suit the times, calling this the new style. But more importantly, disco happened. For Revachol, your city... That meant only one thing. Guillaume La Million. If it doesn't rhyme, you're not pronouncing it right. Out of the dazzling swirl of disco music, in an open air, what de Nuit, somewhere in Revachol West, Guillaume's blonde mane appeared on the screen. He sang some bullshit. Then he made the expression. You have some understanding of the near history of disco. The rest is darkness, aside from the useless fact that the motor carriage outside was a Caprice Canema. Some twenty odd years, there is a vast ocean of time between right now and the expression, looking good on you, or anyone. Humanity has run aground in that time. It's a different world now. The expression is a relic. Everyone loved it. Maybe you thought some of the stardust would rub off on you. Maybe it did. Either way, it's all gone now. Only the grimace remains. The click is used to spur on a horse. It also features heavily in Guillaume Le Million's regional mega hit, Don't Worry, Your Pretty Little Head. It doesn't have to be. You can swoon over Guillaume and his champagne cork smile whenever you want to. Maybe some of the stardust will return. It's too late. Like an image on film. The expression. 
belongs to your primary motor cortex. It would take a minor neurological miracle for you to cease producing it. The window stands broken in its frame. Cold wind blows in. The shards face outward. Whatever broke this window came from the inside. A fine web of scarring covers the back of your right hand, but none of it is recent. More likely a projectile than a held object. There are no fragments on the floor from pulling a tool back in after impact. It is too large for a bullet, yet too small for a piece of furniture. You're looking for something heavy and larger than your fit. The single green shoe you found fits the hole almost as well as your foot. It would have also been heavy enough if thrown with force. Congratulations. You smashed the window with your own shoe. Now you only have one. If you're lucky, you could still find the other one on the balcony outside. The door, you mean someone else took your shoe off and smashed the window with it? This person also forced the drinks on you. A cool wind gushes in. Your toes curl up from the cold. Hello, officer. There they both are, two identical shoes, both copiously green and indiscriminately snakeskin, reunited on your feet, like two baby crocodiles. Good, they're balanced, comfy. Feels like the only good thing about you right now, truth be told. to her lips. Her eyes are brown and her face is speckled with birthmarks. She can't be more than 28. A silver jumpsuit falls off her like scale armor, sparkling. This is the sparkle of too many nights out on the city. Uh, no. Because you're a police officer, sir. Okay, cool. I won't. Okay. Sir, you've been here for three days. On official police business, as you put it. Couldn't say. In truth, so far, mostly drinking. You have no doubt about the drinking. But do you strike yourself as a tight-lipped drunk? She must have heard something. She nods. There's a mercenary out back. He's been hanged. The body has been there for a week now. The locals probably got tired of it and called the cops. I didn't mean to overwhelm you with information. You seem a bit... lost, officer. words have already left your mouth. <laughs> what was that? That's not even how words are used. What did you say? Come on, say it again. <laughs> no, you see, that's not what you said. You said... <laughs> Come on, man. Pretty, please. One more time. <laughs> Goddamn right you did. 
You crazy asshole, you. What kind of cup are you? Okay, that's cool. Or if I can just maybe ask you to elaborate on that superstardom a tiny bit. Or maybe you are, Guillaume Le Million. He'd be about your age now. Think about it. One thing, though, it's gonna suck for you later when you have to interrogate me. And for the record, no, I didn't do it. Is closed. There is no answer. You hear the shower being turned on. Some still no answer. Still nothing. This door can only be opened with a key or from. You should totally sing karaoke here, the first chance you get. Your emotions need to be expressed. People need to know your vast oceanic soul, utterly. And it needs to be heard through a PA system by other people. Who is mistakenly identified as a cop for his prominent jawline? Yes, sounds likely. You should probably go on stage and pose for a moment when you're done with this thought. See if it works. You have not yet stumbled on the right lamentation, but it's out there. It'll come to you. You will wreak havoc with it. Don't worry. Serves them right. Wipe that smirk off their face with your sad, tragic song. Who's laughing now? No one. You have to find something tragic to sing first, though. A man in his late twenties stands behind the counter, inspecting a stuffed seabird. As you approach, he gives you a sideways glance, then looks down again. Everything is cool between you and this guy. He's a big fan. Make some small talk. A competent work of taxidermy. The white and brown seabird lies among piles of coasters and drying mugs. One of its wings broken. The man is trying to mend it. Looks like the bird was ripped off the shield that was used to mount it, most likely on a wall. This is the great skua. The seabird is the symbol for the discovery of the Insulindian Isola, the part of the world you are in right now. Look, your buddy is over there. Why don't you go and talk to him, okay? He pretends not to hear you concentrating on the bird instead. A competent work of taxidermy. Looks like this is the- Look, your bud- Why don't you go and talk- He pretends not to hear you. No, I'm not the bartender. I'm the cafeteria manager. I have three cafeterias to manage. Three. Sylvie tends the bar here, not me. I'm- She just, you know. His eyes dart from left to right. This man isn't lying, but he is hiding something. So now you're a cop. Oh, forget it.
Hello, sweetie. You shouldn't keep your colleague waiting. open hand, you see a blister pack of headache medicine. The man does not mind. You probably need them more than he does. You've just picked up some magnesium. This item is stored in the bottom left corner of the screen above your character portrait. Use magnesium to heal your morale if you have morale damage. You gently shake his shoulder, but nothing happens. That sugary black rum stain on the counter makes you teary-eyed with joy. It's almost touching how syrupy and sticky it is. How long have you been up already? Sweet Lord, a whole hour. And you haven't thought about rum and lemonade in all that time. You've truly extinguished all trace of yourself. Forget about the bar. Or don't forget about it. You should totally try to get a drink there too. But first, you should lick that stain off the counter. Yeah, man. Let's get wild. You lick it, but only a little. Only with the tip of your tongue, because you're a pleasure delayer. After two or three licks, the crust begins to melt and a sweetness breaks loose. The sharp, titillating scent of alcohol rises to your nostrils. It's dizzying. You could definitely go for some more. The theme on that pinball machine is a standard royalist theme. Used on everything, from pinball cabinets to full flavor cigarettes. Clinging to a picture book version of the past century, waiting for the king to come back and cast out all the profiteers and homosexuals. Basically, imagine a yellow plastic crown with a liquor brand emblazoned on it. It comes free with a six-pack of Vermilion Roy d'Or. The words Roy d'Or are stamped into the crown's plastic. The sentiment is called anti-centennial nostalgia, pining for a time before the turn of the century. It's common even now, after 50 years. A bespeckled man in an orange bomber jacket is tapping his foot on the floor. Looks like he's waiting for someone. You. As you approach, he narrows his eyes and extends his hand in greeting. Hello. I'm Kim Kitsuragi, Lieutenant, Precinct 57. You must be from the 41st. You realize He's waiting for your name. Concentration makes you squint your eyes. Your name should be deep gold and orange, like a forest fire looming on the horizon, but mixed with the stench of liquor rising from your breath. You're two steps closer to it, but there are still many to go. It looks like we had a little skidding error on Sunday. Saturday too, actually. Have you had time to talk to the manager here? What he means is, he has been trumpied. If you don't mind, we should talk to him again. Ask him for a rundown of the area. Now that I'm here as well. I understand the scene is out back, right? It also wouldn't hurt to assure him the police are finally here. In full force, I mean. Have you mapped out the initial interviews? Okay. We'll have time for that, after we take a look at the coroner's case. Have you removed the dead body from the tree? So, the body is still in the tree. 
where it has been hanging for seven days straight. We should go there as soon as we are done talking to the owner. We all feel that way sometimes. There is no such thing as a police officer, I'm afraid. What remains is that there is a dead body in the tree. Someone has to figure out who put it there. If we don't, no one else will. And then, soon after, dead bodies would be dangling from all the trees. But first, we have to take it down. After you, officer. If you're about to embark on an investigation, shouldn't you have a badge? You mean you don't have a badge? Losing your identification card is a serious matter. My vehicle has a shortwave. You can use it to report your badge missing. I advise you to try to locate it as quickly as possible. But getting the body down should still take precedence. Lieutenant Kitsuragi is now in your party. You can talk to him The man with the unimpressive beard notices you approaching. He drops the ledger he was holding and turns to the lieutenant. Mr. Gart, right? You run this place. Yes. I am Kim Kitsuragi from Prison 57. This is an inter-district investigation, so joining me from Prison 41 Fantastic. Right. Now, I know it took us a while to arrive at the scene. It also took you a while to call us and report the dead body. It was you who placed the call, yes? No, I only just got here. It was probably Sylvie who called you. She usually works the bar here. I'm only temporarily taking over her duties. Do you have her number? As a matter of fact, I do. You said you just got here. From where? Are you a local? What, of Martinez? No. I live in Jamrock. I only sometimes come here to keep an eye on the place. This is just one of the many, many cafeterias I manage. But you still know your way around, yes? In case we need directions. Yes, I know where some things are, but... As I said, I don't live here. I just used to work here. And I'm not going to start working here again, if that's what you think. I didn't imply that. Detective. He probably means this is where you step in and ask your questions. His face expresses profound doubt in your having this. Ask him about the body's location before asking if he killed him. People give up information in the more innocuous question which you can later use in the more sinister ones, not vice versa. Behind this building, there's a courtyard. They hoisted him up on a tree there. That's easy. See that door there? First you exit through that. Then, to your right, you should see a big hole in the fence. A really big one. You can get to the courtyard through there. No need for the keys. The hole is big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry to fit through. This man means the heavy cavalry of the innocents Franco Negro, sweeping over the plains and nations of the enemies of mankind, 5th century style. Unified currency and the concept of cool came in their wake. They wore lamella and carried guns. But first and foremost, Franco Nigerian heavy cavalry was really, really wide. That hole in the fence must be enormous. Haven't you asked me that already? What is it with you and this woman? She has nothing to do with this. Okay, you got me. She went away because of the dead body out back. 
And because I asked for her number. That's why Sylvie went away. I hope you appreciate that. Thank you. I asked an employee out. She didn't want to come, but felt obliged to. It was a bad idea. Now, what is so goddamn fascinating about that for you? It's got nothing to do with the lynching. What? That's good. But there is a timetable for this investigation, dictated to us by the stages of decomposition. And it says we need to move on. You've gained a thought. When this dialogue is over, go to your thought cabinet. I don't know who killed him. I'm not the police. That's your job. This is it. He said they hoisted him up on a tree. Who is this they, if he doesn't know? Uh, oh. People are saying it was the Union dock workers, that it was a lynching. The locals, the customers, the people who eat here, a lot of dock workers eat here. Sylvie told me everyone knows the dock workers did it. Did the debarders themselves tell her this, or is it a rumor? I don't really know. You'll have to ask her. I would suppose it's because they have nothing better to do. You mean the strike? Yes, the strike. The man they hanged was a security guard for the harbor company, I hear. A mercenary. The Unionists probably thought they'd send a message. What are you, crazy? Of course I didn't kill him! The lieutenant turns the page in the little notebook he's been scribbling in. Let's go. Not so fast, Mr. Feminist. You owe me 130 real. As you blow this joint, behind you, a whiny voice shouts. Real mature, man. Real mature. RCM in Martinez. What can I help you with? We don't see a lot of police around here, that's all. Of course. What can I help you with? Me? I am just a gardener. I am pleased to meet you too, officer. Excuse me? Oh. Well, I didn't write it there. I'm just sitting here. You didn't say she wrote it. You asked what it was doing there. Sir, it was implied in your question. The timidness is gone for a second. Something else takes its place. A readiness. I don't know anything about that either. As I said, I didn't write... Pig is a widely used term for members of the police. It's not loving. No need to worry. We are not saying you did. Okay. Well, I didn't. Since the street signs messed up? Okay. What do you need? There's the pier, the Cape Side apartment buildings, some more tenements. Not a lot, really. What do you mean? We're in Martinez, sir. This intersection is called Roundabout North, I think. The Harbor Gates? Some kind of commotion, I think. I don't follow the local politics. A fleet store, too. Some shops and a bridge. The canal bridge leads to the coast, but it's broken, I think. Some kind of accident, probably. Just coast. There's a little fishing village there, and a fish market. But that got closed down ages ago. It's just water. 
No, actually, I think they call it the Martinez Inlet. There are some islands in the bay, but they're hard to reach. Oh, that. That's right there, in the yard. No problem. Of course, I won't. and a gatherer feel like a traveler a simple little cadence he seems to be making it up as he goes from another planet hey there it's the jam my man it's a traffic jam for the ages harbor gates up the street are shut tight no explanation given Workers on strike, scabs agitating, an all-around clusterfuck. Meanwhile, we're all stuck here in long-haul limbo for days upon days upon days. Upon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's official. He too agrees. This is the antechamber of the afterlife. Feels like forever. Like I was born on this here roundabout and this was all I ever knew. Just me and the metal and the tires, the oil and the fumes of mazout. Mazout is an antiquated term for heavy fuel oils. This man has a barely suppressed performative streak. Or he just likes unusual words. Or both. Yeah, imagine. It's been a whole week already. So tell me, what do you need? It's like... Whatever's going on over at the docks, workers got a blockade set up, making demands, no way in or out. Some pretty wild stuff, I hear. Like a giant new power crane in half the company? I forget what exactly. Good on them, I guess. I've heard talk there's a company rep in town, too. Like, a strike negotiator type. They'd know what's up. Precise. Ah, yes, from the Wild Pines. We'll meet her soon enough, I'm sure. They want to keep that money flowing in, my man. Ka-ching! He doesn't blame them, but he's not on their side. That's for sure. Anything else? Yeah, this ain't really my area of expertise. I just do my job and get paid. I have things to do and places to be. All of us do. Us lorry drivers. Cam, your nurse. You still hang around here waiting for this mess to end. Most have scurried off somewhere to get drunk or high. Or laid. Not that I blame them, really. Not my thing. Chasing transient pleasures is a drag these days. I prefer the examined life now. Thinking, reflecting, observing. Oh. High-grade narcotics, illegal firearms, stuff like that. Relax. He's merely joking. Ha! <laughs> no, I'm joking, my man. Found runs a nice, clean business. This haul of cargo is mostly sporting goods. You know, tracksuits and that kind of thing. They usually get shipped to Grad and the Occident. Though we've been making headway in the Il Moran market lately. We're pals and all, but I can't just freely hand out the merchandise. The bosses won't be happy. This rockin' beauty. Sure is, like a rash you can't get rid of. You interested in heavy-duty cargo machinery? A motor lorry, also called a camion, on Caillou and neighboring islands. This one looks roughed up enough to be some sort of found rust bucket. Maybe the A6? Good eye, my man. Yup, she's an old one. But reliable. Me and her spent a long time together. Not unless they've illegalized sports equipment while I was on the road. The man taps his fingers rhythmically against his arm. He ain't one of us drivers. I know that. All accounted for. Otherwise, I haven't really asked about that. Been wasting time right here. Keep him busy. It's easy to see he's telling the truth. He's kept his nose out of the dark stuff. 
analyzing the fundamental structural and psychological conditions of being stranded in the midst of a sea of motor lorries and their sad, despondent chauffeurs. Ask for his conclusion. A sense of surprise there ain't more bodies hanging from more trees. Don't be a stranger. Before you stands a motor carriage. The bodywork is covered in blue and white livery, bearing the number 57. Vapor emanates from the large engine on the back of the vehicle. It hasn't had time to cool off yet. This must be the infernal machine that tore you from oblivion. The Caprice Kinema motor carriage. In the cabin, you are welcomed by a set of steering levers, a radio microphone on a hook, a pull-out toolbox under the seat, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. A metallic drawer slides out from under the seat and clicks into place. The tools inside are neatly organized. Take what you need, officer. It's going to be a long case. I'm not protective of my tools, like some men are. The pry bar feels nice and cold in your hand, heavier than you'd think. Useful for opening all sorts of doors and lids. The handles are long and sleek. Snap, snap, go the cutters in your hand. It's robust, weatherproof, and well-made. Police issue, blue. Let's you see things in the dark you would otherwise miss. The pull-out toolbox slides back into its nest. Preheater gauge casts a warm glow on the steering levers and the radio on its hook. As you tap on the gauge, the indicator pin jerks as if startled. It's in the large orange sector, indicating the engine is warm. Next to the gauge is a red switch, labeled heat. There's no use pressing the heat button. It won't start without the ignition key. Translation. We're not going anywhere right now. The white suede feels luxurious under the touch, and the metal clutch handle so very familiar in your palm. The frequency tableau lights up, and a green button labeled Prime Line glows like a feline eye. And then you hear something. The soft purr of electrical kittens, radio waves cast far and wide over the metropolis. A woman's voice greets you through the step. This is Precinct 50. Hello, Alice. Please assist our colleague from the 41st Precinct here. I'm putting him on. This is Officer Alice Demetri, Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Of course. What is her number, officer? Yes, hold on. Her number is 005-1944-298. Received. Hold on, officer. Lieutenant Kitsuragi slowly begins to tap a little rhythm with his right foot. Quite a lot of time has passed. Officer? I have Sylvie Malaika on the line for you. Yes, hello? Oh, right. Hello, officer. What can I do for you? No? Not me? No, sorry. I don't. <clears throat> Not a lot of people have phones around here. Copper thieves take the wires. People don't have the money to have the cables put in again. They use the Union's phone, or the one on the coast. So the Union has a phone, and there's one further down the coast. Got it. It was someone else. We'll find them sooner or later, officer. It just might take a while. What? Of course it bothered me. But I thought the Union already knew about the court. No one calls... You know, what the Union says goes. People listen to them and they take care of their own, which is like everyone here. I... I didn't want to get in trouble with the others. Push her further. Show her the error of her ways. 
the other people who live around here. Local people. I... I didn't want trouble. You don't live here. You don't understand. Squealing is frowned upon here. Everything is dealt with, well, by the Union, internally. Please, I just didn't want any trouble. I... I didn't know I had to report it. I... I thought someone would take him down eventually. You can almost hear the girl getting smaller on the other end of the line until she almost drowns in static. Okay. You mean why did I leave the bar? Honestly, I'm not really comfortable discussing it with you, sir. Why not? What? No, why would you even think that? Please, don't bring Gar in. I already said I don't want to talk about this. You're m you mean, why did I... Why not? Let's just say I left because I... You know who. What? No, why would you even think that? Please, don't bring... I already said I don't want... You mean, why did... Why not? I... Uh... Let's just say... You know who. Maybe, I don't know. I just know I have to take some time off right now. I do hope so. Please, don't call me again. Bye. Yes. You have obviously done something to upset her at the whirling in. I'm not mad, it's just... You were so drunk and so emotional all the time, and then the skua thing happened. It just made me want to quit. The stuffed bird, the great skua. You threw it against the wall while screaming, fuck that bird, and laughing like a maniac. I think you said it had been giving you shit ever since you got there. It was a pretty bird, there since I started working in Whirling. I really liked her. You call her Scott? Yes, obviously. You were the worst client I've ever seen. And I have seen so many assholes in this place. I've had sailors fighting, union guys grabbing my ass, kids stealing booze. Once a guy was glued to the karaoke machine every night for two months. But you... Well, you were worse than all of them. Honestly, you were getting borderline aggressive. Even about little things like not turning down the volume at 3 a.m. I even liked one of those songs you kept listening to on repeat. No more. I... I hate it now. We Go On by the OO. I can't listen to it anymore. You've turned it into a parody. The hell with that song. Then there was your room. Your project. An experiment to see how bad it can get in there. I tried to send the cleaner, but you wouldn't let me. Threatened to make me understand. I had no idea what you meant, and I don't want to know. And then you screamed something about how you're actually a real cool guy, and no one understands it. One of the coolest guys there is. The coolest guy in Jamrock. Something about disco, too. And then I had to deal with your toilet. The one you clogged with police documents, causing water damage downstairs in the kitchen. I won't even mention you waving your gun around, harassing customers, threatening to sing karaoke, threatening to kill yourself. I... oh... The ones I had to wrench out of your toilet. I... damn it! I don't remember what I did to your damn papers! I don't remember every little thing I do! Especially when there's a hurricane loose, it's your fault for losing them. Not mine. Something in you wants to immediately forget about this, as if there was a reason you threw them away. No, you really weren't. You were simply the worst. God, I... I knew I shouldn't have brought it up. Just try not to call me again, 
and let's pretend it never happened. Wait, really? No, this is absolutely not true. No, I was actually flattered. I've always liked him. There's a pause. You can almost see her on the other side. The telephone cord coiled around her index. I didn't know what to say to him later. Then you came and destroyed the place. So I left without explaining. <sighs> I should have told him maybe. Okay, but please don't mess it up. Please don't take out your gun or something. All, all sorts of things. From disco, rock to some... Which one would that be? Sad? I think the one you mean is the smallest church in San San. Richard, that right up. Interesting. You still have to find it, however. You hear a sigh of relief. On Anything else I can help you with, officer? 57. In the cabin, you see a set of steering. This trash container is locked. The sliding... The body is downwind from here. Maybe you prefer the smell of garbage to the smell of... We could try using a pry bar. The one you took from my motor carriage, or... Or we could ask for a key from the manager of the world... He might also have information. This is better than the pry bar idea. Real mature, man. What exactly were you trying to accomplish? Damn, your feet thought we got away. Because I know you can't pay for them. Not because you ran away. Now, I still have to charge you for three nights and the broken window. That's a hundred square. Don't thank me yet. You still owe me a hundred real. If you don't have it by tonight, I can't let you up there. Now, what the hell did you want? I assume you wanted something to come back here. Mine? No, it belongs to the Whirling in Rags. Thank you for clearing the debt. Why do you keep the... Why? To keep the hobos and drunks out. That's why. And the neighbors, too. They put their trash there, and they don't pay for the garbage company. I thought as much. And are you the only party with access to the trash container? Well, yes. Us and the garbage disposal company. It seems a little callous, doesn't it? Something stirs in you. Prod at him and find out. Callous? What are you, Kras Mazov? Almost all establishments in Revachol keep their trash locked. The whirling in rags is not special in that regard. Kras Mazov, nom de guerre, was an economist and a historical materialist. He was a leading figure on the Graz side of the Centennial Revolution, where he headed the nine-day government. Mazov is considered the father of scientific communism. Mazovian thought. He killed himself. No one was implying you were, officer. Where were we? 
What do you need them for? It concerns the case. Please cooperate. Just bring them back once you're done, please. Absolutely out of the question. Absolutely in the question. First we find a sad banger. Your body is ready, sire. Wait, what? But what about the bird? Yes, the bird. I found it lying on the floor with a broken wing the morning she left. You broke the skewer! I assure you it was him. Why on earth did you have to break the skewer? I can't believe it. I was so sure it was Sylvie. Even worse, I thought she was trying to send me a message. Symbol of... A tender type of hope. Something stirs in you. Perhaps this is why you broke it. All right. Did she say anything else? About me, you know? Did, did she say anything about me? Really? I, I should... I should give her a call then. Thanks, I guess. Was there anything else you wanted, or...? What thing? Yes, not the whole damn union, thank God. Just the nastiest and loudest faction. They come here in the evenings. Dumb, unruly types. Think they're big shit. But they're good customers. They place big orders and always pay on time. We should find out who this Lord Faction is occupying the booth. Lordness means talkative, and we need info. We don't. We have to wait. They'll show up sooner or later. Men get hungry, even striking men. If not today, then they'll be here tomorrow. There are these things called days. You sleep between them. He's saying they'll come after you've slept. Just making clear you got that. What are you, a cook now? That's none of your business. He wasn't pan fried, he was lynched. What could the kitchen possibly have to do? Fine, okay. The kitchen is closed until 1 p.m. because the cook is working. You can snoop around after that, if you must. What? By the way, you should come back to this thing-based questionnaire if you see anything interesting in the whirling later. By the way, where is home? The address is coming up blank, and this- But you've been at this hostel cafeteria for only three nights. Where were you before? You had to be somewhere. Why did you say that? No. But isn't that an expression, not a place? A saying, up on Marvel Hill, a great high place, one that is impossible to climb back to. That doesn't sound like somewhere you can stay if you run out of money. You can try. Run some addresses in your head when you get the time. Maybe a
Hello, sweetie. Wait, who's sweetie? Her eyes move up and down your person as though taking your measurements. Her attention is scientific. Why, you are, officer. You're a handsome man, officer, with your mustache and your chiseled jaw and that silly dimple on your chin. Love can be cruel, sweetie. Love can be cruel. You must forgive me. I'm getting so scatterbrained. I completely forgot to introduce myself. I'm Lena. My husband Morel and I are staying with our friend Gary just down the street, but I come here for tea when they're away. This Lena is wacky enough for the Motley Crew. Hire her on the spot. Oh, sweetie, I heard your conversation with the manager about your uh, financial troubles. When do you get your next paycheck? To try to force a tear out of your duct. Really rip into the whole emotional aggression thing. Officer, get a hold of yourself, please. Sweetie... I'm sorry, but I think you need more help than I can give you. You must be joking. Although our pay does sometimes... It's not easy to assert your right to a decent living wage when you don't have a strong union behind you. Interesting idea. This Evra sounds powerful. May oh no, I'm so sorry I don't have money for you. If, if there's anything else I can do for you, just ask. Yes, dear. Uh, I'm a paraplegic. A paraplegic is someone with limited or no ability to use the lower half of their body. Paraplegia is caused by spinal cord injuries, like falling from a great height or a grenade explosion. No, dear. I'm not quite that old, although I was injured in the line of duty. Nothing so glamorous, dear. Though when I was young, I dreamt of planting the Revacholian flag on some figurative peak. I was a training and development manager at a rapidly expanding mail order shoe company. You'd think it would be a safe job, but I had to be everywhere, and well, once I happened to be under some faulty scaffolding, I was lucky. This was almost 20 years ago, and I was compensated exceptionally well. One can only dream of such payoffs nowadays. That's quite all right. I'm used to people asking questions. I know they're thinking about it anyway. Whatever do you mean? Sequence killers? Oh my. But I think you already have a partner, sweetie. A partner who needs you to help him get a corpse down from a tree. It seems to me that you lucked out with your partner. He has the look of an upstanding officer of the law. Someone you can lean on, and sweetie, you are looking unsteady. Yes, officer. You look rather dazed. Like a stunned fox. But surely things can't be that bad. Oh my. You know where we are, right? That's right. And where is the Whirling in Rags cafeteria itself located? Yes, indeed. We are in the fine city of Revishol. 
How would I even begin to tell you? Revachol is the most beautiful city in the world. We're fortunate to be here, you and I. I haven't seen very many other cities personally, but everyone says so. Revachol is a rare jewel. This city used to rule the world, though it has seen better days. Speaking of history, you know what year it is, yes? That's right, dear. How splendid. Here, take this pen. Knowledge should always be- Her relief is palpable. She was getting pretty worried about you there, but now she relaxes her shoulders. I can tell that this is taxing for you, so I'll just ask one more question. What regime are we living under? What mode of government? Nope. Sadly not. Revachol is what's called a zone of control, under an alliance of foreign powers called the Coalition. We have no government of our own, and what democracy we have is market-driven. Meaning, buying is voting. Oh dear. And you were doing so well. There aren't any cops in Rivishal, not in the traditional sense. The status of law enforcement has been a complicated matter since the revolution. But we should stop for today, sweetie. You look like you need a break. Besides, I'm not the best person to explain the big things to anyone. She's scared now. She's realized you really are brain damaged. A defeat, I'm afraid. The people of this archipelago tried to build something new, something different. The rest of the world didn't like it, so they came and ended it. This was 42 years ago. Of course, sweetie, I, I really don't know how to explain it better. You were doing quite well up until the end, dear. It does look like you're having trouble remembering things. A sigh. The lieutenant buries his nose in his notebook. But maybe a fresh set of eyes is what the world needs, and while I'm no doctor, such bouts of amnesia are often temporary, so I, I wouldn't worry too much. Someone more educated in sweeping matters. Maybe you should ask? No. I'm not an encyclopedia. I won't be a guide either. I'm a detective. Of course. Then I don't know. Someone rich, maybe? Wealthy people are educated. Though I don't know where you would find a wealthy person in Martinez. Of course, dear. Good luck with your... looks at you with bulging white eyes. The face around them does not look human. It's swollen and ready to burst. His lips are fish-like and his tongue like a ball gag in his mouth. You seem to be holding your breath. A cargo belt twists his neck at an unnatural angle. The body below appears stiff. It's letting out an ungodly rot. The smell seeps in, even through your clenched nostrils. Active decay. He took it to throw up of his arm. He's about to blow! Cock's gonna blow! An inconspicuous pile of the roofing material. It's nothing, 
Someone just left some roofing material slanted against an old shack. Glad you asked. When junior researcher Olari Tal invented because there's a secret door hidden behind the panels of Etonite, that's why they're too orderly. What is this then? A tool shed? It's amphetamine, sweet amphetamine. The lieutenant isn't studying the powder in the... There's a good vague way to ask where he stands on drug use. Professionally, I mean. Perhaps not. This is below our pay grade, detective. How... See that ladder there? was such a thing as an ugly kid, then this is it. He's almost exquisite in his ugliness, like a gremlin. Oh yeah, not a comfy Kuno! Right in the dick, Kuno! Get him right in the dick! It's loving in the dick! The boy is sweating profusely, his eyes are like two black holes and his jaw is twitching as if trying to break free from the empire of his body. The kid is obviously high. Fuck that! Pino, yeah! Right in the mouth hole! Shit himself? The rake, Kuno! You should throw the rake at him! The fuck? Does Kuno know what a rake is? Kuno is not a gardener. We shouldn't do anything. You will see. The language these kids are using. Pure, unfettered id. There will be no reasoning with those creatures. Fuck no! Kuno doesn't buy that shit! Fucking entrapment shit! The fuck are you talking about? He's calling us f Kuno! He says we're fucking each other! Alright, entertain the Kuno. Show me what you got. What you got there? What you got, huh? Show me what you got! You found Kuno's secret door to Kuno's secret shack. It was closed for 5,000 years. How the fuck did you get in? And then what? You fucking there! You fucking- He's trying to fuck at you again, Kuno! It's a vitamin, pig! Don't you know anything? You could use some. Yeah, it's the mag! You fucking need that shit to stay on top of your game! Kuno goes through like a tube a day, rips mag like a motherfucker! And you could use a bottle. Oh, don't teach him, Kuno! He's gonna use it against you, Kuno!
you're not getting this pig. It completely takes away the hangover. It's like you didn't do anything. Like you stayed home playing with your choo-choo. Fuck you, pig. Don't do mag. You're gonna OD and you're gonna fucking die. Of course you fucking can. How do you think Kuno made all the docky boys his gimps? Just gotta fly, pig. Not for you, pig. Kuno can't wait to see you get all... Kuno can't wait to... That's all there is to it, then. Don't be a pansy. Just jump. Oh, that. Kuno decapitates pigs. That's just a Kuno demo tape. What? Eh. Uh, what is this shit? Fucking on yourself. This is weird level. Fuck your shit back to normal. What is this? Well played. No one saw that coming. That's where Kuno gets his daily hit of electric. Kuno Shazam. Kuno rides the fucking lightning in there, pig. Bet you'd like to ride the lightning too, wouldn't you? You feel tired and old. But you could have that sparkle in your... Good call, Pigmeister. Don't come and talk to Kuno about his kingdom. Right, Pig. This is where Kuno plays with his little wooden choo-choo. What do you want with it? Look at that fucking shit! You're trying to get Kuno killed! Fuck does Kuno know? The lieutenant takes a quick note. It's a trap, Kuno! Don't climb it, Kuno! Dunno. Kip Kipped is a pejorative term used to describe people of South Seminese or Eri Oppergite descent. It used to be a common first name among the Eri Oppergites of Ilmara. Not so much anymore. Yeah, that's what Kuno said. She couldn't handle the heat, so she took off. Kuno can take it. Shit, nothing to Kuno. Look, Kuno doesn't explain shit. Yeah, her. What was she doing in the greenhouse in March? Fish is sometimes used to fertilize the soil a few weeks before planting something. Yes, it seems suspicious. You don't like things being like that. Suspicious. Don't be wondering about Kuno's shit, pig. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. Why the fuck are you telling this shit to Kuno? Yeah, whatever. Kuno doesn't give a shit. Shitload, pig. What? Don't tell the pig shit, Kuno. If I were to want to waste my time, which I do not, I would ask them who he is, how he The usual being, have you seen anything out of the ordinary? Or have you seen anything suspicious? Just a couple of pigs sniffing around in the dirt. That seems pretty fucking suspicious to Kuno. Yeah, you t Looks like you're a fagari now. Whatever that means. The suspicious question doesn't really work in antagonistic. Kuno's fuck gimp. Kuno uses the fuck gimp for target practice. He's trying to hide the fact that he doesn't know. Kuno knows all kinds of shit. Kuno's not a snitch. That's all. Trying to make the Kuno sing into the popo phone. Probably climbed. You heard Kuno. Kuno wasn't even in Martinez. Kuno wasn't in Revachol. Kuno wasn't regional. The city's too large for him to have left. But he wasn't here, either. So where was he? I don't know. Some fucking... Mesk or... or I don't know. Some other place. Night City. Kuno is... There is no Night City anywhere. That sounds like the name of a city in some pulp science fiction. Why you gotta be riding Kuno's ass? You haven't been where Kuno's been. You haven't been in Kuno's head. 
You want to know where Kuno was? You want to know what Kuno's been fucking up to? Don't tell him that, Kuno! It's not fucking lame. Kuno's building Kuno City. Night City. Raid City. The City of Rage. That's it. And it's not lame. Lame! That's the name of Kuno City, bitch. Get the fuck off Kuno's back. This shit ain't about that. It's impossible to deduce what it is about, at least for the moment. You're testing Kuno. Get lost, f Kuno's Kuno pig? It's always Kuno, never I. Clearly the kid's using the third person perspective as a shield. Kuno doesn't do that smart shit. Don't throw that fuck shit at Kuno. Kuno no- Trying to get Kuno hooked- Watch out Kuno, he's trying to fiddle you! He's gonna put his hands on you! This makes no sense. There may still be a way out. Just appeal to his... Help! Misters, help! He's flashing Kuno. He's showing his genitals. If you don't help Kuno now, it'll be too late. No one? Kuno's doing this because he likes it, pig. Help! The pig's gagging him! Kuno can't speak! You put him up to this yourself when you decided to talk to him in the first place. Listen to your f friend. <laughs> Kuno owns the fat ass. Help! The RCM is trying to fuck Kuno! Fucking logical! <laughs> Help! The logical pig is fiddling Kuno! No! <laughs> Get off Kuno, you sick fat fuck! The nearly psychopathic way they could slip in and out of the act implies you're not the first victim. Look. For emphasis, a ghost is saying this. A shit-eating psychopathic ghost with an ace up his sleeve. I know you wanted to hit me. You got that, I'm gonna fuck that Kuno up look that Kuno's dad gets. The murder look, the rage look. Relax. He can't read your mind. He doesn't know you were thinking that. There's a dead body, remember? That's what you were doing here. You're a cop on a case. I can. Kuna can smell that violent shit. I know what you were... I'm gonna fuck that Kuna up. I'm gonna shut his shit down. You know what? You should have hit the Kuno, because now you're nothing. Get a joke to Kuno. Kuno laughs at you. King Kuno! Kuno turned you into his prison, bitch. You're gonna be in this shit with Kuno. No, you're not. We can just leave. Bitch, you're gonna be in this shit with Kuno forever. A peepo is a type of hat, by the way. Talk to me about my fucking people. You don't know where I come from. You just Kuno's bottom bitch. Okay. Kuno is kind to his bitch. Ask your questions, but remember, this changes shit. Click, 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 click. Kuno 
doesn't 